Chupa Chups is a Spanish brand of lollipop and other confectory sold in over 150 countries around the world. Mom, buy me Chupa Chups! This request has been made almost certainly by generations of our children in our country and throughout the entire world. It's kind of hard to find a person who doesn't enjoy sucking on a hand fruit flavored candy stick and even harder to find a person who's never tasted even one flavor of Chupa Chups. But even though it's currently the oldest and biggest manufacturer of lollipops in the world, it's easy to forget that it all began in 1958 when Chupa Chups founder and the lollipop magnate Enric Burnett saw that when children ate candy, they constantly took it out of their mouths to the exasperation of their parents, sometimes to keep it in their pocket or to observe its colors because they were fascinated, and then Burnett had a brilliant idea of adding a sample stick to a ball of sugar to facilitate its consumption not to get dirty, and to also avoid the occasional choking. And with that, he brought us the first ever lollipop. And that year saw the birth of many stars such as Michael Jackson, Madonna, Prince, and of course Chupa Chups. Burnett managed to make his invention so famous that the name Chupa Chups has become the most common and widespread way to refer to that type of candy even if they're not in the form of the famous brand. During all those years, the candy turned into a real classic, one that has a bit of nostalgia and symbolic meaning. And perhaps unsurprisingly, this popular lollipop has never left the shelves of the stores. What's more, they're mostly placed right in front so that everyone can easily see and grab them on their way out. Today we're gonna explore the story of Enric Burnett, the origins of his delicious lollipop, and find out some interesting facts about Chupa Chups. Enric Bernet Funtana Rosa was born on October 20, 1923 in Barcelona, Spain. His grandfather, Joseph Bernet, was recognized as the first confectionery manufacturer in Spain to open a store in the most prosperous commercial areas of Barcelona in the mid-19th century. So from a very young age, Enric lived surrounded by these precious sweets. After the war, his father, Roma Burnett, established La Gloria Biscuit Firm, where Enric, who at the time was a young man who had relentless spirits with high people skills and a lot of initiative, accepted one of his first jobs as a salesman. He later accepted a job in the Misanis Igrao cheese industry, where he worked as an apprentice shop assistant, administrator, and finally as a salesman of commerce, which is how commercial agents were known at the time. After completing his military service in 1950, Enric, who had 26 years old, had accumulated the experience of working for other confectionaries, decided that it was time to create his own business, and together with his then-girlfriend and future wife Nuria Serra, daughter of another confectioner from Barcelona, he laid the foundations for his new company, and opened his own candy factory called Productos Burnet, which specialized in making sugared almonds. Four years later, his former boss, Domingo Masanes, offered him a job that Enric could not refuse. To take the reins of Granja Asturias, an aligned company in Villa Nueva, that at the time produced 200 products derived from apples. Accepting the challenge, Enric negotiated a unique contract. If he was able to rid the company of difficulties, he would obtain the rights of 50% of the shares, and already in his new position, Enric moved to the Austrian parish of Villemer to take charge of the new company. Once there, he commissioned a French consulting firm to carry out a study to find the candy consumption habits amongst people. The results indicated that 67% of the consumers of this type of candy were under the age of 16, and that the children were very prone to extracting the candy from their mouths, thus systematically dirtying their hands. It was then that Burnett came up with the idea that attaching a piece of candy to a stick would make it a lot easier for children to taste the candy without getting their hands dirty cause kids are already dirty enough. Enthusiastic, the Catalan businessman decided to allocate all the capital and production of Granja Asturias to the manufacture of the new product. But his partners were not satisfied with the change of course that Burnett proposed, and they were quite distrustful, so he chose to undertake the path alone. But such was the confidence that Burnett placed in success of his new product that to protect himself against possible competition, in 1959, he acquired all patents related to his product that would ever overshadow him. He then went on to procure the wood needed to make the caramel and hire the appropriate machinery. That's how he started to manufacture simple candies on a stick, but then he didn't know that he was creating something special for humanity, something that everyone would remember even after all those years. The candy's original name was Goal, since it related to the round shape of the candy to a soccer ball that entered a goal, which was the customer's mouth. But the name did not have the expected success, and in the end, a new name for the candy was commissioned from a Barcelona advertising company. The options were Pipe, rolls a rose, but in the end, Burnett opted for Chops, which was widely accepted, especially due to an intense radio advertising campaign, which had a theme song that went, suck on some sweet candy, suck 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 Chops. 
At first, the Tasty Caramel only offered seven flavors. Strawberry, orange, lemon, strawberry and cream, chocolate and vanilla, and coffee and cream, and mint at an extremely expensive price for the time, which was one peseta for each caramel. Yes, the price was relatively high, but the company wanted to compete for quality and delineate its particular candy. And despite this fact, the new Chupa Chups was a complete success, and more and more children started to buy the lollipops all over the country, and since it was perceived by parents as a quality product, and easy to buy for which they they did not have to wait for change when paying. But the name Chups didn't quite catch on, since due to the aforementioned promotional tune, people asked for Chupa Chups in stores and not for Chups. And after changing the brand name to Chupa Chups, Burnett presented the advertisement, it's round and it lasts long, Chupa Chups, to the public himself. And later celebrities like Madonna and Michael Jackson were hired to advertise the product. The name Chupa Chups became very famous amongst the population, so much so that the people assumed it was the name for the lollipops. For the distribution of his new product, Burnett promoted a self-distribution system that consisted of implementing a sales network made up of a fleet of seat 600 vehicles decorated with the Chupa Chups drawings and logo, with the aim of selling the candy he was making throughout the Spanish geography. The company's sales were increasing during the 50s and 60s decades, and Chupa Chups started to grow significantly. At the same time, the lollipop was becoming more and more popular. Burnett quickly industrialized the company's production, enabling the company to meet the raising demands for lollipops. Already by the end of the 50s, the company was delivering up to 200,000 lollipops per day using its own fleet of trucks and throughout all of Spain, Chupa Chup lollipops were sold in many places such as kiosks, supermarkets, candy shops, food stores and bars, and under his management, barely a year later, Granja Asturias began to make profit and in 1958, thanks to his unusual contract and the success of the company, Burnett controlled 100% of the company and three years later, he changed the name from Granja Asturias to Chupa Chups and his partners were only his father and his wife. In 1951, he married Nuria, and they had five kids, four of whom work in the family business, and thus began the path of this strictly family-owned business. Given the success of the idea, in 1967, Chupa Chups opened a factory in Santa Estevas Arroviras in Barcelona, and in that year, the company also established its first foreign subsidiary in Perpigment, France. Nouvelle soupe à soups, le plaisir de sucer. It was the first step to sell the lollipops throughout Europe and the beginning of its internationalization. And the French population received the product so well that Chupa Chups decided to open another factory in Bayonne, France years after. At the time, 90% of the sales came from the Spanish market and the remaining 10% came from foreign markets. But the total percentage sales abroad were increasing at the same time that the lollipop was introduced in new countries of Europe. By 1969, the product was already so famous that Burnett realizing that however great a product may be, it's nothing without a good look logo to help brand it, wanted to change the brand's logo to achieve an exclusive design, and he called upon the services of an artist friend to draw him a new and original logo. Sitting at a pavement cafe with Burnett one day, and Salvador Dali, yes, the great Amporda painter Salvador Dali, scribbled away furiously on the pages of a discarded newspaper, and within an hour, he'd come up with the suite's famous Daisy logo. Despite the fact that the artist only took one hour to make the design on a piece of newspaper, it is said that Burnett had to pay him a million dollars. Despite the amount of money that he paid, Burnett was sure that the investment was worth it, since the name Dali would undoubtedly give a boost to his caramel brand. Acutely aware of presentation, Dali insisted that his design be placed on top of the lolly rather than on the side, so that the logo could always be viewed intact, complete, and it would become a characteristic element. It's proved to be one of the most enduring pieces of branding ever, one that is still used today, 4 billion sales later. As for the letter, originally the Chupa Chups logo had two different types, one for the Chupa and another for the Chups, but in the 80s, it was decided to unify the typography of the two words based on the logo of the famous Coca-Cola. Within five years, the lollipops were on sale at about 300,000 outlets in Spain. Breaking from the tradition of keeping candy in glass jars behind the counter, a universe away from an impulse buy, the company instructed shopkeepers to place the lollipops as close to the cash register as possible when it's visible to and in arm's reach for children. 
After the end of Francoist Spain, the self-funded private company went international, and in the 70s, the lollipops appeared in Japan, Southeast Asia countries like Indonesia, Singapore and the Philippines and Malaysia, as well as India and Australia. In the 80s, it expanded to the European and North American markets, and in the 90s, to most Asian countries including South Korea. When Chupa Chups arrived in the US of A in 1980, the lollipops became a social and commercial phenomenon for the American teenager, and also a lot of young people, because wearing a lollipop in their mouths was thought to have been fashionable, and most famous actors and singers and models or athletes showed themselves sucking the Spanish candy, which enabled the sudden fashionable lollipop to quickly expand far beyond its traditional children's market. The Asian market, led by China, was Burnett's last major commercial objective, and it was a complete success. Central to the company's expansion had been its willingness to form partnership agreements with local companies, even with its competitions, enabling Chupa Chups to enter a country without requiring heavy investments in setting up a distribution network. As such, the company sealed a distribution agreement in the United States with the wholesaling firm McLean, later acquired by Walmart. In 1988, Burnett's company reached 20 billion units sold worldwide, and Chupa Chups was so famous that it even reached TV. For example, in the North American series Kojak, in which the actor Telly Savalas played a peculiar detective, consumed a Chupa Chup lollipop on each and every episode, helping to popularize the consumption of this sweet. In the 1980s, falling birth rate meant fewer children to suck burnt sweets, so boldly he tried to link lollies to anti-smoking campaigns with the slogan, Smoke Chupa Chups, to attract adult customers. The company's current anti-smoking slogan is Stop Smoking, Start Sucking, with their packages parodying cigarette pack designs. Some packages even parody the mandatory black and white warning label of the European Union with the notice, sucking does not kill. Johan Cruyff, then Barcelona's football club manager, quit smoking after a 1991 heart attack and began to chain suck a chupa chup lollipop on the bench, which helped popularize the anti-smoking campaign. I'm Johan Cruyff. I've had two great dishes in my life. Smoking, playing football. Football has given me everything in life. But smoking almost took my life away. In the late 90s, Chupa Chups even reached Australia with the state backing for its slogan, Smoke Chupa Chups, the lollipop was becoming a global product consumed by people in Europe, America, and Asia. After decades of a single product focus, Chupa Chups began to look for ways to diversify its product range. In the early 90s, the company moved into the chocolate production, producing chocolate eggs for the Italian market. Chupa Chups' success in its attempt to turn this product into an international brand remained limited. However, in the mid-1990s, the company had better luck with a new product, the Smith Breath Mint, the first of the company's products to be targeted at an entirely new market, which were adults. Chupa Chups was also preparing a diversification drive for the new century, launching a brand and a subsidiary, Crazy Planet. This subsidiary created a line of value-added candy, lollipops, and toy products geared particularly to the children's and adolescent market, which features a toy inside a chocolate egg, and there was also the Gum Watch, a wristwatch chewing gum dispenser. Chupa Chups also sponsored the 1992 video game Zool. Their logo was featured prominently in the first level, and in 1997, Chupa Chups launched a Spice Girls lollipop range with different packages, each featuring a collectible Spice Girls sticker, toy microphones, and bubblegum packets that came with collectible Spice Girl temporary tattoos, as well as push pops and crazy dips. Between 2000 and 2003, Chupa Chups was also the main shirt sponsor of English football team Sheffield Wednesday. And since 2010, Chupa Chups has been the signature of the Marriott Brand Hotel Spring Hill Suites. Chupa Chups were also available at the front desk of any Spring Hill Suite property for free to any guest that might swing by. But as of August 2021, Marriott began stepping away from Chupa Chups as a signature item for Spring Hill Suites. The company also knew the great value of its brand Chupa Chups worldwide and discovered another business different from producing and selling just candies, which was the licensing. In this way, Chupa Chups created its own licensing department to exploit its well-known brand by putting it on t-shirts, folders, pens, glasses, and a lot more other items. The year 2000 marked a turning point in the evolution of Chupa Chups. 
the sales started to dwindle drastically and benefits turned into losses. One internal crisis inside the company, joined to the global economic and financial crises in the market, started to blaster its results and evolution. Chupa Chups has based much of its growth in the opening of new factories, financing it with debt. Because of this, the financial expenses grew enormously, while the sales and margins were reducing more and more, and the results of the company started to offer red numbers. Some of the problems that worsened the results of Chupa Chups were the internal crisis that affected the management of the company, the general economic and financial crises that affected the sweets industry strongly by the way of declining sales, reducing of margins and increase in production costs, excessive debt due to large financial expenses, and the product portfolio was poorly diversified, and the total sales were dependent on a few products, and the lollipops represented the bulk of the sales, and the company couldn't compete with the world leaders like Wrigley, Cadbury Craft, or Nestle, especially when they started to produce similar products. Chupa Chups began to feel stifled and decided to carry out a restructuring and downsizing plan focusing only on the core businesses and reducing its total debt. And to do this, several factories were sold and some businesses were left. Enric Bernard died of natural causes at the age of 80 at his home in Barcelona on December 27, 2003. And in 2006, the Italian-Dutch company Perfetti van Mel would reach an agreement with Bernard's heirs to acquire 100% of the capital, paying about 400 million euros. Since then, Perfetti is trying to get good results again for Chupa Chups, and the family has diversified its investments, but continues to have common real estate assets such as Casa Batio in Barcelona, a work by Gaudi, valued at about 80 million euros. And after the sale of Chupa Chups, whatever the fortune reaped, the Burnett brothers decided to reinvest and continue to be active in the business sector through the Burnett family office holding, in which they each control 20% of the capital. Currently, Chupa Chups leads the classification of Catalan multinationals, employs over 2,000 people, and has a commercial presence in 150 countries, and 90% of its sales volume is produced outside of Spain. It's got three industrial plants in Spain, in Zargova, Villamere, and in Santa Esteva Sarroviras. It's also got two more in Russia, one in France, another in China, and one in Mexico. Along with the mop and the talgo, Chupa Chups is one of the international successes of Spanish inventiveness. And Chupa Chups is, along with Zara, Mango, Iberia, Telefonica, the best Spanish brand known out there. Although Candy is the group's flagship, research and development of new products yields a rate of 2,000 patents per year. But there are two questions about Chupa Chups that have been living with customers for all these years. The first question is why are Chupa Chups sticks hollow? And there are two main reasons why. First of all, it has to do with keeping the candy stable. Candy manufacturers melt candy into it, and this way, the lollipop stays attached to the stick and protects it from falling off of it. The second reason is for safety. If kids or adults accidentally swallow the stick, the hole will allow a little air to get through, and in addition, those sticks are recyclable, and they're made of polypropylene. The second question is why are Chupa Chup wrappers so ridiculously hard to open? We've all faced that painful moment as kids or even adults, when you just want to rip into a Chupa Chup, and you can't for the life of you get the damn thing open. It turns out that Chupa Chup lollipops are actually hard to open for an important reason. County manager of the company that makes Chupa Chups, Sam Hansen, said they're actually two layers of wrapper that are twisted together and sealed at the bottom with heat. You can try twisting your Chupa Chups at the bottom of the wrapping to open it, making it a lot easier. So embrace the anticipation of getting into your favorite Chupa Chups because you know when you eventually get in, it will be worth it. Chupa Chups, as well as their famous logo, has become an icon of the 20th century over time. Its importance has become so great that even the Museum of Modern Art in New York has included the Spanish brand in its industrial design collection. In fact, the famous candy was part of an exhibition organized by the New York Institution in 2004 entitled Humble Masterpieces, along with other sample inventions that have managed to change people's lives, such as the clip and the post-it note. And that wraps up our documentary for Chupa Chups. Make sure to leave us a like, leave us a comment, also subscribe to our channel. We love you guys so much and promise to see you on other videos. Bye.